What I care about is one simple thing, your results. That's why in this class, I'm going to teach you how to strengthen, how to improve your listening skills from the scratch, from the basics, from, from the very basic level. But be prepared because then you're not going to be able to use that famous basic level excuse anymore because once you learn once you learn what to do it's your duty you must to commit with your own success Welcome back to Blimey English. Today, I want to talk to you about something that's not important. It is quintessential for your development in the English language. And what is this? So, this is how you can improve your listening skills from the scratch, from the basic level. Many people ask me, Okay, Simon, uh, I've heard of your training. I know that the Speaking Master helps people going to the, through the journey until achieving the CLB9 or higher in the IELTS speaking test, but my listening uh, skills are too basic. D don't you have any Portuguese videos inside the Speaking Master? And I say, no. The Speaking Master is a program fully developed in English. Fully developed in English. I know it's true that you can turn on the Portuguese subtitles to watch the videos, but the whole content is done in English. And why is that? And why is that? You might ask me. This is simply because I want. I want you to really understand English. That's the whole point here. Let me let me come clear here. And come clear to come clear means to be honest and to explain something, okay? If you can't understand what I'm saying to you during the speaking master, which is a program in which I speak a bit slower because I'm explaining everything for you. If you can't understand, you're probably not going to be able to understand your examiner during the test. You, you need to, to face it. That's the truth. Because you need to be able to understand English. Right? You must understand English in order to pass your IELTS test and achieve your CLB 9 or even higher. So I've written another article to help you go through it. I've written another article on how to improve your listening skills from the basic level until a higher level at which you can feel a bit more comfortable with the language okay and then eventually not only take the speaking master course but also to improve develop augment your social relations because now you would be comfortable using the language but let me say something to you there will be there will be another version of this class in portuguese for those speakers who cannot understand even the basic English okay so there will be another one but not for now today I'm posting just this one and this one is for you to practice your listening skills as well because whilst learning whilst hearing me saying you're also practicing your listening skills okay in fact you'll not be only hearing you'd be listening to it right do you know the difference between to hear and to listen? It's practically the difference between to look and to see. That's a philosophical question, isn't it? Okay, the thing is, 
Uh, I've written this article and I'm going to read it here with you, okay? So we can develop your listening skills, okay? Before I continue, there's only one more thing I want to say, okay? What I care about is one simple thing, your results. That's why the classes, that's why in this class, I'm going to teach you how to strengthen, how to improve your listening skills from the scratch, from the basics, from, from the very basic level. But be prepared because then you're not going to be able to use that famous basic level excuse anymore because once you learn, once you learn what to do, it's your duty. You must to commit with your own success. That's the truth. That's the truth. It might be a bit harsh, but that's the truth, right? No one can study for you. No one can learn for you. No one can do what only you can do to your success. Okay? I'm not the one responsible for your improvement. I'm not the one responsible here, but no one is actually. No one is responsible for your improvement. Only you can do it. Only you can study. Only you can learn. Even if you ask someone to study for you, they will be studying for them, not for you. Okay? As because knowledge, knowledge cannot be taken from one's mind, from someone's mind. As Albert Einstein said once, let me see the phrase here, because I, I used this one in this article. The mind that opens up to a new idea never returns to its original size. So be prepared to do what needs to be done. Okay? Good. Very good. Let's continue. Once you have the knowledge of how to improve your listening skills, you then will be able not only to take the Speaking Master, as I told you, which is my online training, but to do many other things in life. I always say, I always say that when you learn a second language, your world doubles its size. Because now you have all, all those words, those sentences, those idioms, those expressions that you only knew in your own language, now they have at least another meaning. So your world doubles its size, at least, okay? So, okay, let's start assuming you've got a basic English, right? First, I need to say that any, any language has got four skills. For abilities to be worked on, listening, reading, writing, and speaking. The first two, listening and reading, are the receptive abilities. They work as input skills, right? It means that when you're listening to something or reading something, you are receiving information. When you're reading a book, when you're listening to a radio program, you are receiving information, right? It's a passive activity, right? The last two skills are the productive abilities. They work as output skills. It means that when you're writing or speaking, you are producing information. It's active, right? When you are speaking to someone, when you are writing a task, a writing task or an essay, you are producing information. It's like an output skill, okay? In order to thrive, to succeed in the English, in the IELTS speaking test, you need to use your output skill, the speaking, because you will need to produce information. You will. What is not self-indicative is that you have first to have received information, so then you be able to produce information, to transmit information again. It means that you need to work on your receptive skills to ameliorate, to improve. 
your productive skill. Does it make sense to you? Does it make sense to you that first you need to receive information so then you become able to produce information? Does it make sense for you? Because that's what happens. Okay? Otherwise, you will either not have enough output or will have it weakened. And that's why you hear some people saying, uh, I understand, but I can't speak. I understand, but I can't speak. Can you notice? Can you get it? If you don't receive enough information, enough content through listening and reading, you will not be able to speak properly. I will repeat that for you. If you don't receive enough English content through listening and reading, you will not be able to speak properly. As I was saying, you probably know someone, or maybe you are one of those people. You probably know someone who is able to understand, but not able to speak, right? So, when someone says they can't understand, but they cannot speak, that's the problem we are facing here. Insufficient understanding. I'm not saying that you don't understand what the other person is saying to you. You understand. You understand what they say. I'm saying that if you can understand but cannot speak, the amount of exposure you got to the language was insufficient. Is insufficient. Insufficient for you to produce content. It's enough for you to understand, but it's not enough for you to have it incorporate it inside yourself so then you'll be able to put it out and if you don't have it inside you you're not going to speak fluently and naturally does it make sense to you okay that's the thing i will repeat that in another way okay you can even understand what someone is saying to you or asking you so to speak but if you haven't received a great load, a great deal of English content before in your life, you're not going to be able to answer naturally, simply because your mind has nothing to rely on. Simply because your mind has no reasonable amount of English content to form and build sentences and thoughts. That's why you can understand but you cannot speak. This way, when you improve your listening skill, you are, in fact, when, when you improve your listening skills, you are, in fact, improving all the other ones, all the other skills as well. Listening practice makes you notice, understand, and copy features of pronunciation, such as intonation, connected speech, rhythm, vowel length, mouth position, and specific sounds. Some of these I've talked about in other videos, like connected speech, um, vowel, vowels in the phonemic chart video, because these things, those features of pronunciation, you will only be able to catch, to understand, to notice when you are receiving content through listening. When you are receiving content through listening, then you will be able to understand that although you have read in a grammar book and that is the one in fact, what native speakers are saying in real life is, and that's the one. Can you see the difference? And that is the one. But when you go to real life, you hear, and that's the one. Or even, even more basic, and I. You go to real life and you hear, and I. And I. And I. You see? That's the thing, you need to receive a huge load of English content through listening. I will tell you what to do. The idea is that you have to be exposed to English content as much as you possibly can. 
in order to catch and apprehend and then learn the language nuances and details, you need to be exposed to English, absurdly exposed. And when I say absurdly exposed, I mean it. You need to bombard your brain with listening. Some people have watched the video telling my story. Have you? And I said there that one of my mentors, he used to say to me, you need to bombard your brain. You need to bombard your brain. So I did. And so you also should. When I was preparing myself for my IELTS test, there were days in which I'd take over 14 hours of listening activities. Of course, we can't do it every single day. This is obvious, but you need to be able to do it. That's the point. I will tell you the secret to improving your listening skills to the advanced level by yourself. Well, I don't like to call it a secret. It's more of a, a way, a path, a recipe for you to follow. Okay, are you ready? Here goes, here goes, brace yourselves. Every single day, you listen to as much English content as you can. That's it. That's all you need to do. There's no magical formula. There's no super activities, elaborate, no. You simply need to listen to as much English content as you can. That's all you need to do. It's simple. But it's not easy. You have had work to do. Have this in mind. You have had work to do. This is no piece of cake whatsoever. No piece of cake at all. You need to understand that. It's not easy. And it can probably be arduous for many, many students. And it will require time. It will take time, actually. It will. But I guarantee it's worth it. And it is worth it, not only because you feel you will feel triumphant when you pass your exam, but because by doing this, you will reach a certain level of English that will allow you to reap what you've sold. Have you seen this expression? Have you heard this expression to reap what you sold? It means that if you're doing something today, in the future, you will benefit or not from what you've done today, okay? That's how you augment, you improve your listening skills. The day will come that you'll be able to recognize the words they're saying. Even if you don't know the word, I told you, you need to listen to as much English content as you can. Even if you don't understand everything. The day will come that you will be able to recognize the words even if you don't know the words meaning. That's when the reading practice comes in handy, when it's useful. You need to expose yourself to English content by listening so you can understand the spoken language and you also need to read in order to improve your vocabulary. But that's for another video. The question you're probably asking is, you're probably prompt, ready to ask me is, how? How do I do it? Are you prompt? Are you ready to ask me that question? Okay. My answer is, how do you do this listening practice? Whatever way you can. I will suggest you some activities here from, from easiest to hardest level, in my technical opinion, right? But you can practice your listening skills in many, many ways, whatever way you want, okay? First, a brief recommendation for you. Start choosing the content you like. Start doing your listening practice with content you like. I'm not going to say, take an academic lecture about philosophy and listen to it. No, 
about grammar and listen to it. No. No. If you don't like philosophy or grammar, there's no reason for you to do that. If you like other subjects, such as romance, thriller, horror, fiction, etc., that's what you should pick. That's what you should choose. Okay? Another relevant fact you must know before starting. You're going to understand you're not going to understand everything. And that is okay. I will repeat that for you because this is something that keeps lurking in the back of many students' minds. You will not going to understand everything. And that is okay. That is okay. Have in mind that your purpose, your goal here, is to get exposed to it, not to understand. It's also now that you can decide on which accent to focus. At this point, if you are starting your preparation, you can decide on which accent to focus, a British or an American accent. Since you're going to expose yourself to a great deal, a great load of information and content, you're likely to start copying the type of accent that is most featured in these activities. But this just... Did, did, you, did you get it? If you start watching many, many British series, you're probably going to start copying the British accent. If you start watching American series, American movies, then you will start copying it, right? But this is just a matter of personal taste and personal liking. If you, if you like it more when you hear a British accent, and you would like to speak like that, then choose a British content. Then choose British content. If you like it more when you hear an American accent and would like to speak like that, then choose American content. Simple as that. There's no reason for you to be worried or to be concerned about your accent during the speaking test. Your examiner will not mark you on your accent. Okay? Okay, let's start with the first activity I will recommend you to do. And please, those are suggestions, okay? I've said that, but I'm saying again, those are suggestions. The first activity, films, watching films. This is probably one of the best ways to get started with your practice. If you are a basic learner, you can start watching with subtitles in your own language first. So you have the general idea, the gist. Gist means the general idea and you don't get lost. Then you can go back and watch it again with English subtitles. And then a third time you can watch it without subtitles. I know, I know, I know. Some people will ask me, but do I need to watch the same movie two or three times? If you're asking me this, I ask you another question. Do you really want to improve your listening skills? You need to understand that you're not watching a movie here for fun. At least not in the beginning. You are training. You are training. And this is different. Okay? If you can't afford a decent English course, a private tutoring, this is the easiest way to go. The easiest way to do it alone, by yourself. And trust me, you will not regret it. Trust the process. Okay? Okay. If you are at the intermediate level, you can skip the first step and start watching the film with English subtitles on. The fact remains that you must pass through the third step, which is watching without subtitles, because this is the real listening practice. The other two are just for you to not get lost in the middle of the process, in the middle of it, and to have an idea of what's going on. And that's why watching films is the first activity. You can watch everything in one opportunity. And remember, the focus here 
is to get exposed to it, not to understand every single bit. Okay? Be at peace with yourself, with the world. You're not going to understand everything. Okay? The main idea, the purpose is to be exposed. Okay? I'm leaving here some recommendations for you on British films. Are you ready? The first British film I've got to you is Harry Potter. This one requires no explanatory comments, right? An award-winning production and completely worth watching. The last ones, to my taste, manifestly are not for children, in my humble opinion due to its dark and Stygian atmosphere. Stygian is something obscure, right? The second one is Lord of the Rings, another box office hit here, with an incredible cast, and this, this one is a must-see. Another one is 007, the four ones, actually, featuring Daniel Craig, which is an amazing actor. All four movies are indeed great and are worth your attention. Okay, now let's go see the next activity. This activity is series, watching series. This one I consider to be one position higher in the rank of difficulty. And that's because you don't get the whole story in only one episode which means that you can feel a bit lost, okay? This one I'd recommend for intermediate learners as a result of their ability to follow the plot, the story, more easily if it is divided in many episodes. But, hey, don't take me as an absolute truth. Don't take it as a face value. If you take something as a face value, you accept it the way it is. I'm not saying the absolute truth here. Don't take this like that. If you're feeling confident enough, go on then. Try it. Try it. Even if you're not an intermediate, try it. No one can tell you what's best for you but yourself. I'm only telling you what I myself did. Okay? Once again, have in mind that you need to watch an episode twice and that your focus should be only getting exposed to it, not understanding every single bit. As I told you before, you can either choose British or American series to watch. I will leave here some British series as a recommendation of my personal taste. Okay? The first one is The Crown. Have you seen this one? The Crown is a British series telling the story of one of the most important women in the United Kingdom. In fact, in the whole world, the Queen. It's a delight for people who appreciate history and the register, the level of English used is quite clear. Okay. The next one is Luther. This is another British series and as one expects, an excellent British detective series. You're going to know Luther, character played by the impeccable actor Idris Elba. One of my favorites, actually. This, the next one I've got to you here is Paranoid, another British series, British detective series, with just one season. This one features not only Idris Elba itself, as another highly esteemed actress, Indira Varma. You might have seen her in Game of Thrones as Ilaria Sand. Do you remember? Hmm? The next series I've got to you here is Game of Thrones. This is nearly known by everyone. Whether you've seen it or not, the fact remains that you probably have heard of it. It's indeed one of my favorites, but be prepared to hear lots of different variants of the British accent in it, okay? And this one requires no comments, right? Simply must watch. The next one is Black Mirror. This is a dystopian fiction and each episode brings a different story. Although it might be a bit distressing for sensitive people, 
some episodes stretch the idea we have of technology way ahead. It's notably well produced and intelligent. Okay, let's talk about the last activity I would recommend for you. Podcasts. Podcasts. Now, we've come to what, in my technical opinion, is the very best content for listening practice. Podcasts. But such a magnificent resource comes with a side note. Top of difficulty. And the reason, it's quite simple. You're not seeing the person talking. So all the hard work is indeed done by your ears. Of course, there are podcasts out there with transcripts for you to follow, which is great. But this is not available for all of them. Okay? The thing with podcasts is that you can find them talking about practically any subject you like. Films, music, literature, poetry, cooking, philosophy, fine arts, language learning, books, and multitudinous other ones. Right? Remember that your focus is to get exposed to it. So don't be mad at yourself if you can't understand everything. This is a process. I will recommend some of the British podcasts I most listen to. And trust me, they're really good. They're really, really good. I've listened to dozens and dozens and dozens of different podcasts. These ones here are my favorites. I'm planning to make another video specifically about podcasts and how to use them to improve your skills, but that's for later on. Let's see them. The first one is Luke's English Podcast. This is simply the best podcaster you will ever listen to in your life. Luke is a British teacher living in France and he's been podcasting for 10 years now. His podcast has over 670 episodes. 670 episodes. And it's not like you'd expect from an English learning podcast. He doesn't only talk about grammar and so on and about. No. He talks about everything in this life. The episodes are, on average, over one hour long. Which is fantastic for what? For listening practice. Okay, the next one is The Mystery Hour with James O'Brien. This one is also another outstanding one. As Mr. O'Brien himself says, this is your weekly opportunity to improve your knowledge. What happens here is that this is a radio program and they also make a podcast of it. Someone brings in with a question like, why do we clap as a sign of approval? And then someone else will ring in with an answer during the show. This is superb. You will laugh out loud. This is guaranteed. Besides, with this one, you get to hear real English. Because it's often, it often has people calling from cars, in the traffic, with noise in the background. The perfect opportunity to practice. The next one is, I will teach you a language. Ollie Richards is a polyglot who speaks eight languages. His podcast brings short and medium episodes through which you can develop not only your English set of skills, but your mindset to learn languages as well. This is because his podcast is intended to English speakers. So you'd be listening to real English, real English content. The next one I've got here is the Infinite Monkey Cage. The Infinite Monkey Cage. This is for science lovers. They bring some panelists to talk about different matters, but in a light-hearted way. And you learn in the process. The next one is Desert Island Discs. This is one of BBC's podcasts and it's been broadcasted since 1942. 
Of course, it was just a radio program at the time, but nowadays they also make a podcast. If you like music, you're gonna love this one. Every episode, they invite someone interesting, including actors and actresses, and play an imaginary game in which they are cast away to a desert island and get to choose eight discs, one book, and one luxury item to bring with them, while interviewed by the host. Ineffable, which means it can't be easily described with words. It's so good. The next one is unexplained. Now, this one here is not for everyone, I must say. This is a podcast about mysterious real-life events, oftentimes talking about hauntings, ghosts, and everything that creeps us all to the very bone, which I find, in fact, quite an attractive and refreshing experience. Are you like that as well? Be advised of this one. It's probably the most famous podcast talking about this on the internet. Okay? All right, all right. Now that I've told you how to practice your listening skills from the scratch, from the basic level, you have only one thing to do right now. Start doing it. There are no more excuses. Start doing it today. It will be hard. It will be painful even sometimes. But after a while, you will start feeling more comfortable and noticing that, in fact, it works. And you don't really need to question this because it worked with me and also with many of my students. So you better try it as well, okay? Remember to be consistent. You must listen to English content every single day, the maximum you can even if your maximum is 20 minutes, just keep up, okay? Then eventually, you're going to enjoy all the benefits of having an advanced level of language understanding. Well, I hope I've helped you today. If you liked this content, then please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel or following Blimey English on Instagram and on Facebook. But if listening is really your thing, you can listen to the Blimey cast. I didn't put that one there, obviously because it's my podcast and I'm assuming you already know it, but you can listen to the podcast, which is my podcast, in which I present everything I've been talking to you in a more detailed way, okay? This is time for me to go and I see you in the next videos. Cheers!